Hi guys, it's Moa aka Swedish Whiskey Girl and we're back to have a little look at some different whiskies today. So we are going to have a look at three of the world's best selling whiskies. So we're having Jameson from Ireland, so an Irish whiskey. We have Johnny Walker Red Label, which is a Scotch blended whiskey. Then we have Jack Daniels Old Number no. 7, which is of course a Tennessee whiskey. So I thought we would start with Johnny Walker Red Label, which is this stunning bottle here. Johnny Walker has a really rich history, so if you're interested in the history of some different whiskies or blending companies, I should definitely have a look at this one. One thing that I think is quite fun is that the Striding Man that you can see on the bottle here actually was turning the other way up until around the year 2000 when they actually changed direction because he was walking to your left, which is walking to the past, and now he's walking to your right into the future, which I think is quite a, a nice little detail. There's also a reason for the angle on the label, which means you can fit a larger font on your bottle, so it's clear to see what you're reading. Um, and of course, these this lovely shape on the bottle is of course great for packaging mini bottles in a box as well. So what we're trying here is the red label. It is their pioneer blend um, mixed with whiskies from the four corners of Scotland and contains both green whiskies and single malts from up to 30 different distilleries in Scotland. So we are going to have a little look at the John Walker Red Label. So let's have a look at the notes. You get a smokiness coming up. Very, very soft, smooth smoke. And of course, some of that fruitiness, like apples and pears, like a green fruitiness. I believe this one sits at 40%, so the alcohol doesn't stick up at all. It feels very, very smooth and easy going on the nose. It's always difficult to pick out any particular thing. Just have this kind of smooth scent that kind of draws you in. So let's have a little taste. Slangeva. You definitely get a little bit of that soft smoke on the palate as well, but also those kind of juicy green fruits. Definitely some pears and some apples. It's kind of that mixture between the drier kind of apple taste and then the juicier pear taste, I would say. Very soft spice, very kind of easy going. It does feel quite juicy and fresh to me. And will definitely be really interesting to compare them to these others too. So let's move on to Jameson. So Jameson is of course a whiskey from Ireland. It consists of both pot still whiskies and also green whiskies. So it's also what we would call a blended whiskey. This is consists at 40% and the whiskies in this is aged for at least four years in oak barrels. But of course in Ireland you can also use different types of oak, which makes it a little bit different from Scotland where you have to use oak casks. So there's a lot of interesting whiskies coming out of uh, Ireland, of course. Ireland has really good whiskey and they tend to kind of peak because they're very popular in the States around St. Patrick's Day. But of course, due to the current situation in the world, St. Patrick's Day was kind of cancelled this year, so maybe we should give them a little bit extra love this year. Uh, definitely a lot of really interesting whiskies, and I'm a big fan of the Caskmates series. Um, so whiskey that's been matured, for example, a South Cask, uh, which is really, really interesting. And I also have the Jameson's Cooper Crow sitting over here on my shelves, which I think is really nice as well. But well, let's have a little look at this one. This immediately feels a lot sweeter than the red label. Also still very smooth and easy going. Maybe a little bit more vanilla notes, so it's kind of that kind of creamy sweetness. I feel like my nose might be a little bit flat today. Um, so actually a good advice if you think you're finding it a little bit difficult to pick up flavours is to nose the back of your hand which kind of neutralizes your nose between whiskies. Yeah, definitely get a little bit more of that kind of caramel 
notes now. Caramel and vanilla are still very soft, not really any smoke um, and not really any spice either. So let's have a taste. Slams your ass. It's also very smooth. There is a sweetness, but there's also a, a dryness. It kind of feels like 50-50. So a little bit dry, a little bit sweet. You do get some of those caramel notes coming through. It's just like a little sweet treat, especially if you compare it to the Johnny Walker Red, which had a little bit more of that kind of smokiness and a little bit more robust, I would say. Um, this one's definitely kind of like lighter in a way, but still very nice, <laughs> especially if you like a bit more of kind of a sugary vibe in your whiskey. Yeah, this whiskey is just so easy going. So if you're looking with something like no sharp edges, just very velvety, but that kind of sweetness that you might recognise from a green whisky, uh, and this is just such a easy going, non offensive, easy to like whisky. Let's see how we compare this to number three, which of course is our Jack Daniels Old Number Seven. So this is a whisky from America, from Tennessee, and it's actually quite interesting because this is not a bourbon, but it's kind of made in the same way you, as you would make a bourbon. They also add another step after those traditional steps that you go through at the start. They add a step of filtrating through sugar maple charcoal which makes it the specific Tennessee whiskey. And of course they also make their own casks which is made from American white oak um, and of course American white oak tends to give you more kind of vanilla flavour, so a little bit more tropical sweetness as well. Um, so this one will definitely be a little bit different to the ones across the pond, like the Irish and the Scottish whiskey. So let's have a little note. It's, it's weird, it almost reminds me of a, a swimming pool. <laughs> that kind of chlorine uh, scent in the air. Like a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit of chlorine, but also this kind of earthy note. <laughs> Sounds like a weird combo, I know, but it does smell good. I can't wait to have a taste, so cheers. Definitely get quite an easy going dram as well. This one also sits at 48%. Um, it has definitely a different character to the other two. It has like a, a depth to it that I think comes from that fresher oak contact. So from of course newer oak you tend to get a lot more character in a shorter period of time which sometimes you find that whiskies that have been matured on cast have previously been used for other types of spirit like bourbon. So tend to take a little layer off. It's almost like a tea bag. So the first time you use the cask, you get all that color and also all the flavor. And then the second time you use the tea bag, you get a little bit less color and a little bit less flavor. And the third time you get a little bit less even still. So when you use these kind of fresh American oak casks, you tend to get this kind of powerful character coming through. And I feel like I get this in this, even though it is quite easy going and mellow still has this lovely kind of earthy note but it's like a a cold forest earthy note so if you're out walking in autumn when the ground's just frozen and you can still feel that it's a little bit damp but it's still quite cold I get that kind of earthiness uh, if that makes sense to anyone uh, it does in my head but I know sometimes I say things that only make sense to me so sorry about that but I'm, I'm just trying my best to explain what I'm getting so in the Jack Daniels you also find this kind of oaky note of bitterness, kind of that black tea bitterness. If you turn up the notch on it, it does have this kind of big flavour that goes really well with the earthiness and of course those kind of vanilla tones in there as well to make it a little bit more mellow. And on the finish I get this kind of banana note. It's like banana bread. No, do you know what it is? It's actually <laughs> this banana mud cake that I made last week. It has this kind of gooey centre. That's exactly what I get on the finish on this. It's just a kind of 
yeah, a banana gooeyness. So maybe I should do a pairing with the Jack Daniels and the banana mud cake. Uh, <laughs> might be a really good match. Now, of course, Jack Daniels is quite known for being mixed with Coke, so Jack and Coke. It actually has its origins in 1907, um, which is quite an interesting story as well. Yeah, so I thought I'd just go back and revisit the other drams and see if I can discover something new and just give you a few little notes on each one. So this is the Jameson's again. Which suddenly after having the Jack Daniels smells a bit more like green peppers. The sweetness is kind of subdued a bit. Yeah, if you love an earthy note in a whiskey, um, maybe you're looking into getting into American whiskey or you're a big Scotch or Irish whiskey fan and you just want to try something different, I would definitely go for the Daft Animals Old Number 7. It's delightful. <laughs> and of course, maybe you're looking for something to complement your Coke, then I can see why the Jack Daniels is nice. Because that kind of sweetness in the Coke and the dark element of it with this kind of earthy vanilla sweetness, I think would be great. But if you're looking for something a bit more sweet, mellow, easygoing, maybe you're just looking for a dram to sit and enjoy with your friends, maybe you're looking for a gateway dram, something mellow and welcoming with a hint of sweetness that will invite you into the world of whiskey, Jameson's might be for you. And of course, if you're looking for a way to get into smoke, or perhaps just to get into whiskey in general and you're feeling a bit daring and maybe you like a bit of bonfire smoke maybe you like being out in the forest and you want something that might be a little bit familiar to you then it's johnny walker red label going back to these whiskies now because i have tried all of them before at another occasion but not kind of compare them like this and i'm so surprised that the experience i'm having of each and single one right now they are just very nice in flavor they're Easy going would be perfect gateway whiskies, uh, depending what you're looking for. Very approachable, very welcoming, and yeah, it's just so surprised. Um, have you done a similar comparison, perhaps? And please let me know. I find it so difficult to pick a favorite because I actually like all of them, <clears throat> and I'm quite surprised by how much flavor you find in each single one of them. 
oh, I don't know, I think I was expecting to go for the Jameson because I do think that's a delightful dram, especially with the sweetness coming through. But I think... <laughs> so it seems my camera doesn't want me to tell you which one my favourite is today because it actually cut out uh, just there and I kept recording for another 5 to 10 minutes without realising, but of course I will tell you anyways. So because I'm feeling a little bit more on kind of the smoky side today, I think the Johnny Walker Red Label has to be my favourite. But if you ask me tomorrow, that might of course be a completely other story. Um, but I'd love to hear if you've tried any Johnny Walkers, any Jamesons, any Jack Daniels. Which one's your favourite? Do you have any recommendations for me? I'd love to hear. Of course, put them in the comments below. As uh, so always, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I also have that in the link here below. And I hope you'll have a lovely day. Sanjava. Cheers. Cool.